Hello my beauties, welcome to this video where we're talking about the archetypes of the Right Up Essence. Miraj can't be here, but he's done his role. And I want to also warmly invite you to my Right Up Essence course. You can find the link in the description below. It is 90 minutes, it's audio content, it is super informative. It's both like psychological reflections on like how to take up space and the courage to be seen, but it's also practical reflections on like how do I put together an outfit and what should I focus on, you know, and if I'm not a mall Clooney, what does it mean to be right up? So definitely check that out. And now let's talk about the essence. So the right of essence, I have talked about this quadrant in my previous videos. I'm gonna link them below so you can watch. And I do wanna quickly just remind you of the main keywords we use for the right of essence. So for the right essence, our keywords are dreamy, radiant, refined, inspiring, luminous, the sun and the ice queen. And they are filtered through this upness, for which our words are mysterious, glamorous, extravagant, dramatic, effort, intimidating, the queen bee concept. So what is an archetype? It's basically like answering the question like, who has this essence? What type of person would fit in here? It's kind of this like ideal type of a person, a collection of traits, my general observations, and like these very general style tips that suit this type of person. And I find these archetypes to be extremely useful in three different ways. The first way they are useful is kind of like recognition, right? When you hear me describing this type of person, maybe you're like, oh yeah, oh my god, that's me. Or you're like, oh yeah, I know a person like this. Or you're like, ooh, I hadn't thought about this, but I would like to be that. So it's basically just this like spark, this idea, this awakening of the vision. The second way to use the archetypes is as this like permission and invitation. For all of the essence quadrants, I'm really inviting you to connect with like your natural gifts and the thing you want to bring into the world. And we have so many reasons to work against these things. So maybe looking at a celebrity or just thinking about the general archetype like, ooh, that is a cool way to be in the world. Like, that's okay. That is a good thing. I don't need to worry about being too intimidating or too expressive or putting in too much glamour or whatever. Like, this is a good thing. So it can give you this like permission and invitation to really explore. And then the third way, of course, is like inspiration and exploration. I think you can definitely spend time just looking at outfit photos of the different celebrities I'm featuring here. You could think about the archetype more generally, like what type of clothes would this person wear? Sometimes I find it's easier to really think about this like abstract being who has this archetype and what they would wear rather than me like, what should I wear? Because like the distance helps you actually create some new ideas. And the final thing I wanna say is that in this video, I'm gonna be showing a celebrity and I'm gonna be talking about how I see their style story relating to their celebrity persona, like how this archetype represents how they present themselves into the world with style. I'm doing that rather than showing you like specific items these archetypes would wear, although I have like styling recommendations I'm gonna offer because I find that these like specific items are best, you know, when we're one-on-one. -on -one. In a video format, I find that when I show like outfit ideas, it just creates more confusion because we have such a huge range here of people in terms of age, life situation, like climate, you know, profession. So it's so easy to be like, oh, I couldn't wear that, so that can't be me, you know? And that's just like really unfair to you and I wanna avoid that. So that's why we're doing this kind of like storytelling approach instead. So there are five archetypes in the right of quadrant. We started with the role model and the priestess, and now we have added the icon, the playful dame or the princess, and the power. So that's how the whole map looks. Now I'm gonna talk about each archetype, their story, some styling suggestions, and I'm gonna give you this celebrity example. If you wanna see some like normal person clothes, I will share some examples on my Instagram in the coming week. So let's start with the role model. What's her story? I find this to be a person who holds herself to kind of like a higher standard, and that includes to her her appearance, 
can be like a natural role model to other people, which means that people do tend to look to you, look at what you're doing and be influenced or inspired by you. And I find most role model people have a little bit of an ambivalent relationship with this, but ultimately, if you do like the way you're presenting, you feel comfortable being seen and you like bringing kind of like yourself and taking the space, it feels really good for you when you feel good about it. The role model to me is less about having some sort of specific aesthetic or a signature style. And it's more about taking what is like appropriate to your situations and doing something more with it and kind of like owning this like desire in you for like the something more. And that's kind of my main styling advice for the role model is just to learn to embrace this part of yourself, this desire to have things that are a bit sophisticated, a bit refined, but maybe also a bit dreamy, this desire to kind of take space. I think a really good advice for you is just to take what's expected <laughs> and then like do something more with it, right? So whatever your situation in life is, whether you are a student or a teacher or a mom or an employee, it's always thinking about like what my environment is, what is like, what do I find to be like a good execution of this role visually and how can I do something more with it? It's about also adding more pieces like on other people, it could look a bit like fussy or overdone, but on you like accessories and like hairstyling and the makeup up and the visually interesting clothes it's like you can pull it off so it's about leaning into it and going for that complete head-to-toe look that says like I am pretty comfortable with being seen because I enjoy it and my example of the role model is Blake Lively she's very like radiant she's very dreamy I think she has a bit of this like sun energy in the sense that she's just like a little sun that shines. And she definitely dresses in this very glamorous, sophisticated way that's very like effortful. There's kind of a big head to toe look, there's a signature story. And of course, you know, this is a celebrity person with a stylist, but I do think that she has this more upness than some other celebrities. Uh, like that there's more emphasis on the extravagance, the drama, um, just this like effort in her appearance. I know that she likes a lot of like suits and this kind of elegant menwear. I think that touches on like the role model being able to carry off very kind of like timeless looks. And she also does this kind of like sexy, glamorous, feminine looks that I really like. Basically, Blake is a great illustration of what I was saying about thinking about your role and executing it. For her, her role is like Hollywood starlet. And then she really executes that role in a beautiful way with attention to trends, with attention to I guess her personal taste to create just like a really beautiful style. Icon is the archetype right in the middle of the right of quadrant. I think it's like the core of the right of quadrant. This person really typifies a lot of the right up traits with this like refinement, the radiance, the intimidation, the mystery. I feel like this is kind of a strong, creative, powerful person who is on a mission. I find that for her, her style is really an extension of her mission in the world, her mission in life, right? So if she is a creative person, then her style is kind of an expression of the art that she's creating or this like artistic persona that she's inhabiting. If she is like in a, like the head of a company or the head of a division in a company, then she is a representative for that company, right? So it's really about creating a style that represents the life's work that you're trying to do and taking the space and being bold, strong, and confident. In terms of the styling, I would say like the main thing about the icon is that she's like not ever about being formulaic or understated. It really is about having that like courage to be more dramatic, to be more extravagant, this like willingness to be seen and having this comfort with your power. So this like confidence in taking space and choosing items that may be different from the people around you, like allows you to really occupy the space that you wanna occupy. 
I find that the icon does often tend to have a visual brand. So I do recommend for you this kind of process of refining and honing in on like what is the heart and soul of the mission you are here to represent. What makes you iconic? What are those signature pieces, signature colors, signature shapes that really help you feel like it's you in there? And really aiming for something that feels like elevated and timeless in the sense that while you're speaking to current trends and shapes and colors it's really about detaching from like the norm of what our people are supposed to do and rather using your style to really amplify what your personal mission and vision is our celebrity example for the icon is michelle obama what a great representative for the icon i mean she is truly iconic as a person. She represents a lot of what I'm talking about with, as a first lady, then of course she has the mission to represent like the Obama presidency, the Obama White House and the institution of the first lady. So she does this, but she does this with her own flair. I mean, you know, she chooses the designers she works with, they are meaningful. And even though like her profession calls for her clothes to be like very conservative, she still finds a way to make it expressive. And then after being the first lady, then she's still very much defined by like the Michelle Obama flavor, right? And she dresses in a way that is extravagant. You know, there's a lot of light, loud colors and shapes and really taking space, these like shimmery thigh high boots, right? Very non-formulaic if you think about what a former first lady should wear very unapologetic and really helping her create that like very inspiring and intimidating and uh, this like dramatic really like radiant michelle obama brand that is really like bringing so much impact into the cultural sphere into the political sphere into like all kinds of discussions with her podcasts her programs etc and i would like emphasize at this point in the video i'll say it again of course you can be the icon without being like the first lady i just think it's fun to bring in these examples of people who are really living this archetype like at the highest possible volume because it's I just find it to be more inspiring and exciting to think about that next up we have the priestess and her position is all the way up there in the upper right corner this is a person similar to the icon where she really has kind of like her mission and vision for life and her style is an extension it's something that helps her it's something in service of her vision and mission but she's like more up and more right than the icon. I find that especially these people tend to be more mysterious, more intimidating. They're just like more guarded. It's definitely a person who does enjoy creating some like distance between themselves and the world even when you're like obviously there you know what i mean it's this energetic distance that your clothes and almost this like costume of you which is like a very genuine authentic costume but it just like helps you kind of like belong to your situations if you can do it through this like very strong framing that your style gives you and in a way your style is almost like ceremonial, right? It's like <laughs> you put on your priestess outfit and then you are ready to go out there and do your work. And your style is helping you clearly stand out and mark who you are, what your role is, what your like position in the interaction is. So it's about really like unapologetically defining your space in the interaction with clothes so i would say it's like overall clothes are a very strong like act of communication for the priestess in terms of the styling i would definitely think that the priestess is defined by her styling for these like more special occasions or the occasions when she can put on her like ceremonial clothes so it's like if you don't feel connected to your like priestess self when you're like in your loungewear that's totally fine right i think the idea is that it's really thinking about the situations you have the audience you have there and thinking about like what can i bring them and how can my style be at the highest possible service and it is like not holding back on the glamour the drama the effort the extravagance and it is also just giving yourself this like full permission to really create a bit of that distance and a bit of that mystery and knowing that there are aspects of you aspects of your personality maybe some like playfulness or whatever 
that you feel are really strong within you but are not necessarily like they're being telegraphed on the surface. In terms of the celebrity, we had um, Kate Middleton as our example before. I think she is a wonderful example of the priestess. Similar to Michelle Obama, Kate obviously occupies a very specific like role in society. She's like literally the princess or duchess, whatever, right? So she has a very specific dress code. But more than that, I think she really speaks to this like ceremonialness. As I've mentioned, part of her role is just being places. She shows up with her outfit and that is like a statement that says like this event is special right so kind of like her contribution visually is so big or you know the kids will write to her and they'll be like oh i would like to see you dressed in pink and she wears a pink dress right so the style is really not meant to be like expressing her like innermost self but it's really this like tool for communication and because I don't want you to get the idea that you need to be like the Queen of England to be the priestess, I have an actress example, so I chose Angelica Houston. I would say she has a very commanding presence and she definitely has this inspiring and mysterious and this luminous and extravagant energy about her she's almost kind of dreamy to me but i feel like if you just look at these photos of her you can understand what i mean about this like kind of quite big distance to her i have no idea what angelica's like normal style is or what type of person she is what i find like compelling and interesting about her is this image that she captures up of this like I don't know, kind of like unattainable person, but not unattainable in a bad way, right? In a way that evokes inspiration and admiration. Next up, we have the power. This is the archetype that's like up and not super far to the right. And I think she's really characterized by the upness, by the effort, the drama, the glamour, the mystery, this intimidation. That's definitely what characterizes you primarily. And then it's kind of like filtered through this rightness. I find these people to have a very like strong and commanding presence. It's not to say they're bossy or they're like telling people what to do or that they are <laughs> always getting their way. I just, I called it the power because I just think that's really the key is that you do tend to have a lot of personal power. And I find this archetype to be a little bit tricky. I mean, definitely like, it is like the courageous visionaries who I see here being in the power because really embracing power as a woman in our society to be like <laughs> what's that like you know what does that look like so it can be very ambivalent i think this is a really rich really deep archetype I find that like it's very common for the power women to feel like they're pulling really into this like very edgy or like very sensual styling because these are ways that help them like access the feeling of like power and this like sensuality helps them kind of like connect with like the feminine nature of their power i don't know i have like a deep analysis here but the style advice i want to give is that if you do find that you identify with the power and you tend to really go into like i don't know like very in the left direction or you like go really dark really edgy all the time of course you can do that but i also invite you to explore kind of like your inspiring side and you're like luminous you know your inner glow your sun energy and finding ways to like explore the power in a more multi-dimensional way in terms of clothes recommendations i think this person really thrives timeless types of clothes but with a modern to live right so you've got the trousers you got the blazers you got like the vests <laughs> you got like the skirts you can do a suit you can do a jumpsuit you know what i'm talking about like kind of classical like structured handbags you know pointy shoes like you look great in high heels you look great in statement jewelry so yang elements basically like also yang coloring as i said people are tend to be very drawn to dark colors but you can do bright rich colors you definitely incorporate those yang elements that work for you even if your shape it's completely yin Helen <laughs> clients are like romantic or soft kameen who are in the power you don't need to be super yang but it is about finding like what is a yang that works for me is it like a bold pattern is it like a statement jewelry is it yeah so definitely exploring the yang and also thinking about this like intentional head to toe and finding accessories because you have this like strong upness right? like the effort like the perception of effort <laughs> is really helpful to you so similar to the role model what could look like stuffy or like trying too hard on other people 
just will look completely like natural and easy for you if you kind of like trust the process. So I would say just to really be unafraid to explore that. Basically like anything that helps you feel connected with your power, your presence, your creativity, that's the kind of stuff you wanna be going for. And the celebrity example we showed for this archetype is Amal Clooney, you know, she's a human rights lawyer. So very powerful, but of course, human rights lawyers aren't all fashion icons. So I think what's really interesting is to look at the way that Amal actually really embraces like her role in the world or whatever and how she expresses it to style. She really takes that like lawyer role and she fulfills it so well. So it's not like, oh, she's wearing a suit, she's so boring. It's like you get this sense of control, like she's showing you herself as like the lawyer woman and you don't have access to the other sides of her. So it's not that she is this kind of like dry, powerful woman, but it's more that she's just controlling her image and it's her discretion what parts of her you get to know. She definitely does other looks that I really like, you know, like her like relaxed looks or her glamorous party looks. I think she looks amazing. So it's not like she can only do her law clothes. I think what's inspiring about her non-law clothes is that you can see again, this just like very strong attention to detail, the luxury, not just like expensive stuff, but this feeling of luxury, this feeling of like the head to toe, really consideration, this effortness. I mean, you may not love all of these looks, right? But I'm just saying like they're making a statement visually. And of course you don't need to be a human rights international lawyer to be the power, right? I think the inspiring thing about Amal is that she really embraces like her brightness, this like refined luminous energy and the upness and she uses that image and those tools to really make her way in the world and that is very inspiring for all of us regardless of like who we are or what our job is you know the power can be you last archetype is the playful dame or the princess and this is all the way to the right just a little bit up Unlike the, you know, icon or the power where they really have this mission in the world or this role and style is an extension of that, for the playful dame princess, it's just more, it's more like with the role model where it's about style, it's about elevating life. So for her style is this tool, it's in service to just making something more special of life, kind of creating something more through her really thoughtful approach to style. I do find that these people tend to have, I don't know, just kind of like a lighter, but like dreamier essence that there is something definitely like refined, sophisticated and polished about the things that you prefer. And I do, like you are still in the write-up category if you are in this archetype. So it is still about kind of like creating a little bit of distance through your style, doing things that are a bit like extra for other people and not being so bothered if it appears a bit fussy to other people. In terms of the styling, whereas the power is like the very yang, I actually think like the playful day or the princess, she's quite yin. So again, regardless of what your physical like yin yang body type is, I just find that you tend to be more drawn to be in details and you can do different aesthetics here. You know, you can do this kind of like ballerina or this like preppy like um, tomboy style, but it's all just, I don't know, there is a bit of like the softness, a bit of, um, sometimes an ethereal or classic, whatever quality, you know what I'm talking about. It's a little bit of this like refinement, but with like a little bit of a light touch. Definitely it's things that feel very dressy to others. And again, as with all write up women, being very comfortable and unapologetic about like the level of self-expression that you prefer. If you want your hat to match your sandals on the summer day and nobody else is gonna do that, that's totally fine. If what you're wanting to wear feels like a costume to others, I would say this is like the biggest thing. And as all with the other write-up archetypes, I think for you, attention to detail is so important. It is finding like these accessories, the makeup look if you wear it, you know, the, the shoes, the bag that really like go with the story of the outfit. And it's also choosing clothes that have some sort of visual interest. I find that the playful dame can be 
kind of like drawn sometimes into more write down styling, which of course like you can do, but like ultimately your heart is a little bit allergic to pieces that just feel like too simple, too quiet, too basic. So a lot of like your styling is just like inviting yourself to travel more into the upness and to choose pieces that are like louder, more visually interesting, more complex and creating just like looks that tell more of a story. My celebrity example here is Gal Gadot. It's Wonder Woman. So obviously she is a gorgeous, beautiful actress. I think she exemplifies this spirit of the Playful Dame Princess where, you know, she definitely has very like inspiring, powerful, somewhat intimidating persona. But at the same time, she has this like sweetness, this lightness. Uh, her styling tends to be this kind of like refined, sophisticated, elevated styling where even if it's not super maximal, there's just like a big, to me, like impression of effort. And I think what's really fun with Gal is that you know, when she tries to go too far into the like simple or relatable styling, she's not gonna look bad, right? She's just an extremely beautiful woman. To me, my heart just says like, ah, oh, this ain't it. And I think it's a little bit funny when she tried to do that Imagine video, which like, of course, is problematic for many reasons. But I think part of the reaction is just like, she doesn't have this like, relatable approachable vibe she has a little bit of this like princess vibe so that i think people are like really not buying her trying to relate to their struggles um so this is the summary of the archetypes check out the course if you're interested follow me on instagram if you want to see more examples of clothes and i hope to have the next video for you soon thanks for watching bye